Before the factory lights switch on and machines power up, before manufacturing begins its around-the-clock march, Trek bicycle designers shape the conceptual into the promising, the promising to prototype, and the prototype to product. It's the nation's largest company of its kind and an international leader in the technology of two-wheel locomotion. Come tour the Trek Bicycle Factory and see how success in the heartland of America is built one bike at a time. Trek started in 1976 and it was really started by my father and a gentleman by the name of uh, Bevel Hogg. And they were building frames one bike at a time. The first year they started out, they built frames in a barn. They built about a thousand frames and gradually the business grew until 1984, 1985. We were selling about 50,000 bikes in the United States. We had a number of problems at that time and that's when my father really came in and he kind of redefined the philosophy of the company. And he said a couple of things. He said the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to build a quality product. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure it's a competitive value we're going to deliver that product on time and then what we're really going to do is we're going to create a positive working environment for our employees and when you take a look at those statements that is really what has propelled Trek and today you have a company that sells roughly 800,000 bikes around the world. We've made significant investments in our engineering department. Around two years ago we had about 30 engineers here at Trek Today we have over 60. We've made major investments in new computer modeling software. That's enabling us to take products, develop prototypes, get to the design phase, move all the way through to manufacturing in roughly half the time it took us three years ago. This is where it all begins. We're in the advanced concept lab right now. This is sort of the think tank of what goes into bicycles and what goes into bicycle design. We start here with a lot of the, the basic concepts, how we want the bike to perform, and play around with, with that idea, that concept. If we're happy with what we see on a computer and feel confident that this, this is going to do what we want it to do, we'll commit and actually go to a prototype. And we've got people that can really put the pedal to the metal and turn the concept into a prototype that we can go out and ride and get an idea what the heck is going on with that concept in terms of real world testing. Depending on what we feel and what we see, we'll come back here, look at the computers, try to figure out what, what worked, what didn't work. We'll go back out, build another prototype, and we'll go out and test that until we get it to the point where we know that this is it, we're ready to rock, this is a bike that we want to take into production. The bottom line is to get the, get the product tested in as close to real world testing as we can get it in, in terms of what is the customer going to put this bike through. So we involve the race team. The race team gives us a lot of feedback. The race team can get on a bike and in a real short period of time they can tell us what's going on with that bike. Um, we have people that aren't racers, you know, a lot of us, a lot of the engineers and a lot of the designers will get on the bike and go out and say, okay, is this thing doing what we think it is? We'll give it to some prototype riders that sort of pseudo, maybe not professional racers, but guys that race you know, weekend warrior types and they know what they're looking for, they know what's going on. Um, the idea is to try to get it into the hands of as many people as possible so that they can give us the feedback. The feedback is the big thing. The biggest thing that you need to understand about Trek is there's one reason why we're here, and that's to build bicycles. We're a real bicycle company. That's why we have a plant here in Waterloo. We employ about 600 people here who build the greatest bikes in the world. We also have a new plant down in Whitewater, Wisconsin, where we employ about another 800 people. The 
old adage, steel is real, is still with us. Steel gives you a pretty, uh, pretty rigid pride depending on how the frame is designed, so there's a lot of design consideration that goes into that to match that particular property of steel to the right characteristics that we're looking for. It's really uh, something that you can, in terms of the, the frame itself, that you're going to have for a, a long time. Trek's steel bike recipe combines two main ingredients, premium grade true temper tubing and in-house budding. A budding machine stretches raw tubing, thins the middle and thickens the ends. It puts the strength where a frame needs it most. Quality steel bicycles use reinforced tubing. Few bicycle companies enjoy the advanced structural control custom budding allows. After subjection to thousands of pounds of tugging, the butted tubes are conveyed to a baptism by laser fire. It's at the Laser Miter Station where Trek's 20 years of bicycle building knowledge translates into simple math equations for the machine to understand. A miter machine cuts frame angles to a predetermined geometry, which ultimately sets one style of bike apart from another. And it does so with alarming speed and flawless precision through steel or lightweight aluminum. With an aluminum product, we can get a, quite a bit of different ride than we can with a steel product. Aluminum product gives you a little bit more flexibility in ride characteristics because of the inherent nature of the material itself. It's got a, a different stiffness related to it, so you can play around with different diameters of tubes in order to get the stiffness that you're looking for or the compliance that you're looking for. Whether the exotic ovalized aluminum or conventional steel tubing, they both eventually find their way into a jig, a template that fits up the miter tubing for tack welding. This is where a designer's renderings visibly become a production reality. All the puzzle pieces combine to make up the heart and character of a bicycle, the frame on which a bicycle company's reputation rides. From the welding stations to alignment tables, Trek's battery of quality control measures is the ultimate, but not the final acid test for a quality product. You know, one of the biggest things that sets Trek apart from every other company is the technology that we deliver. It's one of the things that we founded the company on. It's something we believe in strongly. Over the past three years, we've probably invested over $10 million in the technology that we put behind the product. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to build a conventional bicycle, but they come in handy when building a super light, uncommonly strong bicycle. Carbon fiber, a once classified material developed exclusively for the defense and aerospace industries, now represents, for the bicycle industry and others, the fruit of American tax dollars. Carbon fiber is a dream material come true in our lifetime. In terms of being able to dial in ride characteristics, shape, form, function, you name it, you can do it with carbon fiber. Basically, carbon fiber has the strength of steel, but yet is lighter than aluminum. We take the material, pull it out into long sheets, slice it up, and ply stack it. If the plies are not put together correctly with the optimum amount of compaction and limited voids or low voids, uh, hence the name OCLV, you get a heavier bike that is not as strong. Suffice to say that what we have done is optimized those portions of the processing that give us the best laminate and therefore the lightest, strongest, and stiffest bike 
on the market. After the parts have been ply stacked, they are put into a die press. The shapes or preforms are cut, and then we go on to molding. This is where all of what I would call the magic of OCLV takes place. You can reinforce in areas where you need greater strength, greater stiffness. You can take material away from different areas where that stiffness or strength is not required, and so you can optimize the whole bike. This material needs to be hand laid up and placed into a mold or a tool and formed into the correct shape. This is so that the fibers that are within the structure at that point or the laminate can carry the loads. The direction of those fibers is very important. The final process down at our lug facility would be the machining operation. Um, that's where we cut off excess material, machine the ends to receive uh, different types of inserts and those things. And then the pieces, parts are bonded together and then the bike is finished. The Y-Bike was really an outgrowth of uh, current technology that we used. We knew where we wanted to go. We wanted to make sure that the concept was right and carbon fiber OCLV technology made that a reality. The carbon fiber Y technology established a new state of the art in feather light frame design. Mated with a motocross style unified rear triangle, this full suspension mountain bike's most notable performance trait is its smoothing interface between rider and terrain. One of the things that distinguishes the Trek full suspension design from others out there is the fact that we were looking to try to keep the rear end as active as possible all the time, seating or standing. That's why the pivot position is a lot closer to the bottom bracket. It's just about completely over the bottom bracket so that when you stand up and pedal, you're not locking out the rear suspension. And that's, that's a point that really sets the Trek full suspension apart from a lot of others. From budding to laser cutting, from tack and TIG welding, through all the inspections, a frame's journey through production is like a rite of passage to the paint rooms, where it's bathed before receiving its uniform of color. We have a system here that nobody else in the industry is using, as we're using three coats of powder paint with a decal underneath a clear coat. And uh, that's really the uh, state of the art for a painting bicycle. Trek's $2 million powder paint system relies on an electrostatic process. With a positive electrical charge to the frame and a negative charge to the paint, the powder magnetizes, clinging like dust to the frame. The paint at this point, before it's cured, is uh, electrostatically held to the frame and you can wipe it right off and uh, rework it. The, uh, the powder has no odor, no VOCs or any uh, toxic chemicals on it. After running the gauntlet of paint guns, the powder's cured to hardness in 400 degree ovens. If it passes inspection, it finally receives the Trek badge. Frame decals. We've just put in place a new quality assurance program here at Trek to make sure that every single person within the factory has an ownership stake on how the quality level is within the plant. So we take four bikes out of every production lot and we grade that bike on 36 different criteria on a scale of one to five 
and then we determine what the quality level is in the plant day by day by day. If we've got a problem, we kick the bike out, we search the problem all the way back into the process, and we fix it. In order for us to be responsible and deliver the product that we know is going to last as long as it possibly can and deliver the performance that the end user is expecting, we've got to do a lot of bench testing. That includes bench testing the thousands of supplied components as well as the Trek made products necessary to a working bicycle. From finite computer analysis to basic fork fit up, it's an expensive preventative measure Trek can't afford to do without. When you really get down to the most important thing about Trek, it's not the product, it's the people. And the biggest thing I can say about Trek is what a great workforce we have. A lot of our competitors build a lot of bikes in the Far East and then they import them into the United States. And that's about 70% of the bikes sold in the United States come from outside the United States. So at Trek, we're trying to do something different. And one of the major things that we do is we actually build bikes. When you build bikes, you're controlling the final product. And why we build bikes at Trek is so we can make sure that we deliver the best value on the sales floor for you. Once packaged, a Trek bicycle receives a final test before it's green lighted for delivery. If so much as a cable crimp or a tire liner is missing, the weight scale flashes red. In that case, it's not the product Trek wants you to have. You know, a lot of people think Trek's a big bicycle company, and to tell you the truth, it really is a big bicycle company. But the reason that Trek got to be a big bike company is because we build bikes and we sell bikes one bike at a time. Since Trek's founding in 1976, this family-owned and operated companies built over 5 million road, touring, and off-road bicycles for the global marketplace. Designers today design with a view on the world. Not bad for a company that was literally born in a Midwestern barn.